Okay. We did vernalization as well. Yes, we completed it for the vernalization. Shakula, am I audible to you? Okay, we completed the vernalization and we did the photo photoperiodism and all that. Yes, we have completed the plant physiology. Yes, we did uh, the plant physiology completely. And yes, we were supposed to start from the uh, human physiology today, right? So the first topic of the human physiology is uh, digestion and absorption, right? So, uh, Magna, what is what are the topic for your uh, pre board examinations? So it's uh, all uh, term two uh, chapters. Uh, okay. Uh, board is okay. Fine, fine. So no, no issue, ma'am. Right? In case if you want uh, like help or revision in any of the uh, like uh, human physiology topic, so you can consult with the discussion and then you can uh, like take my help, right? Yes, so sir. If you are facing problem in any of the, because you know, human physiology is the big, big part, right? So definitely yeah. you'll have some problems. So in case if you have any problem, you can uh, contact to the Niskarthi and we can schedule the class, class accordingly, right? Mm, yes, sir. Right. So we'll start with the uh, human physiology. In human physiology, the first topic is uh, digestion and absorption, right? That is the digestive system. Digestion. Fine. So you know uh, the first part of the uh, digestion is that is digestive system. So how the digestive system works? What are the uh, anatomical structure of our digestive system? So we are going to discuss with that. Right. So first part is that is human digestive system human digestive system right. so out of this topic uh, first i would uh, like to give you a brief of the human digestive system so how it functions so uh, i am going to share one of the my diagram which i have made myself okay hi good evening you sir good evening sir so we are going to start with the human physiology, right? So first chapter is the human digestive system. So let Hello, me, sir. yes, hi. Sir, did you wrote anything else before this? Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay. I'm just going to start with the human physiology, right? Uh, digestive system. So let me share with you diagram of human digestive system. So first we'll talk about the digestive system and sometimes you know they ask you to describe the human digestive system then you have to draw this diagram and this is the actually diagram right and let me make you a bit larger Percent complete for this one. Mm. 
Yes, this is the. Look, this is the diagram of human digestive system. So I'll scroll down, I'll make it more clear. Yes, now this is complete. Look, so I'm starting from the uh, uh, mouth. So our digestion start mainly, we are talking about the human. If you talk about the human, our digestive, uh, digestion start, in fact, digestion process, start from the mouth only. So if someone asks you where, from where the human digestive system starts its digestive process or digestion process. So digestive process starts from mouth only. Why it starts from the mouth only? Mouth, because in mouth, we have a certain kind of glands. So these are actually ca called, uh, these are actually called uh, 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 salivary gland, right? So the space inside our mouth, that is called oral cavity. Inside oral cavity, we have certain, we have certain glands and these glands are actually salivary gland. Look, at the upper part of the mouth, we have three type of, three type of, not three number, three type of the salivary gland. The upper gland is called parotid salivary gland. Parotid salivary gland is found above the upper jaw, right? And there are two type of the gland, they are found in the lower jaw. In the lower part, there is a gland called sublingual. Lingual term, uh, uh, like reflect, Lingual term means tongue. So sublingual, which is found below the tongue, right? And there is one more uh, salivary gland that is called submandibular. Mandible means this chin part. So the gland which is found below the chin, that is called submandibular. So there are three types of the salivary gland. Mandibular, sublingual, and uh, uh, parotid, right? All these three glands, all these three pair of the glands, they secrete enzyme called saliva. Saliva has a certain enzyme. We'll discuss in detail. That is a tylen enzyme. So tylen enzyme, it uh, breaks down the carbohydrate part. Hence, the digestion start in human body in the mouth. But there are certain animals like bovines, means buffalo in cow. So they do not, uh, they do not uh, have like these herbivores, they do not have salivary glands, right? So the digestion starts from not in their, their mouth. So their digestive system is something different. But human digestion starts at the mouth. After that, you will feel the part where both of the both of the pubes, I mean digestive and uh, the uh, respiratory tube, both of the tube are common part, right? So this common part is called pharynx. After the pharynx, this, this upper part, it makes the respiratory tube. This, the part which is the, uh, the dorsal part, this, this ventral part of the tube, it is respiratory tube and this part is called that is food pipe so food pipe is technically called esophagus so uh, i have encountered a, a question the question was that it has been asked in uh, uh, your neat examination and the question was that what is the length of e uh, food pipe so the answer will be what is the length of food pipe any one of you Can you tell me what is the length of food pipe? Yes, buddy. Tell me. Food pipe, esophagus, 25 centimeter. That question has been asked in medical examination. It was a very simple question, but many of uh, many of the students they made mistake, right? So uh, we will dictate all these things. Just try to focus over here. Try to understand the concept. Next, again the food pipe or esophagus have been divided in certain part. The food pipe have been divided in cervical part. This is cervical, this is thoracic, and this is abdominal. So again, we have divided esophagus in three parts. Look, there is a curtain-like structure. This curtain-like structure, this part, this curtain-like structure, this is called actually what? Diaphragm. So diaphragm is a muscular structure. It separate thoracic part means lungs part and abdominal part means digestive part. So this is a chamber like structure which divide these two parts, right? Thoracic part in above the digestive system and 
<coughs> below the thoracic there is a abdominal system look the lower part which is the digestive system the next part is the stomach right this is the stomach after the stomach there uh, the start that is the small intestine a small intestine have certain part in a small intestine here here from here it starts the small intestine a small intestine have been further divided in many parts right the first part is duodenum then jejunum then ileum look this is the duodenum part this upper part of the small intestine is called duodenum in duodenum part there is a common opening of two gland that is called hepatopancreatic ampulla hepatopancreatic ampulla is a common opening of liver and pancreas so this is the pancreas this leaf like structure is pancreas this upper part is called liver right liver secretes some enzyme it gives these enzyme to the gall bladder and gall bladder will the help of this duct that is called hepatic duct it pour into the duodenum part again the pancreas also secrete its enzyme to the small intestine a small intestine is the part where complete digestion takes place after the digestion takes place enzyme do their actions even a small intestine have its own certain kind of the glands so they secrete the enzyme digestion of food takes place so mainly the digestion takes place in small intestine a small intestine digest the food and absorb the food rest of the part is shifted to the large intestine from here from here the large intestine start the first part of the large intestine so large intestine again divided into three parts first part is called cecum second part is called colon and third part is called that is rectum right this is the third part so this this cecum part have a small structure that is called appendix appendix is a vestigial organ so what are the vestigial organ come on tell me who is going to tell me what are the vestigial organ any one of you what are the vestigial organs yes come on guys ma'am na what is vestigial organ shahid <coughs> sakula what is yushra any idea look vestigial organs are those which were functional in our ancestors but they are not useful in our body and in our body they are just in inactive state and in future they will disappear so appendix is a inactive part it's a 6 cm uh, small part and it do not participate in digestion it is not a functional part so what is the function in it is the scientists considered that uh, the appendix uh, is a structure which was useful in our ancestor when the human was an animal so we used to eat uh, herbs and grasses and all that on that time it used to uh, digest the cellulose but due to gradual evolution we stopped eating grasses and all that hence the use of appendix uh, uh, it uh, no no it is no more required uh, for us so what happened then uh, the role of appendix got uh, finished so uh, nowadays it is non functional part and this kind of the appendix is i vestigial organ right if you want to note please note it down put a heading vestigial organs vestigial organs are those organ which were vestigial organs are those organs which were functional in our ancestor vestigial organs are those organs which were functional in our ancestor but they are they are useless but they are useless they are useless in our body according to scientist appendix appendix put the appendix i will tell you all example appendix nictitating membrane nictitating membrane membrane and pinna muscle 
Now I am going to, to tell you what are these pinna muscles. Our example of pinna muscles. Our example of vestigial organ. Look, appendix. I have told you nictitating membrane. This membrane. This is the red color spot inside our eye, white ball. That is called nictitating membrane, right? So this is vestigial organ. Again, uh, many of the animal uh, uh, they they can they can move their uh, ear, but we can't do that, right? So these uh, we have those muscles, but they are not active in our body. So they are also vestigial muscles, right? So pinna muscles they are found in here this part. Nictitating membrane, we, it is present in red color for, in the form of red color here in the eye, and uh, this is appendix. Clear? Vestigial organ clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. Again, the colon is divided in three parts. This is this part is called ascending colon. This is ascending colon. This is this is transverse colon. This is uh, this is descending colon. Right. So colon. So large intestine have been divided into uh, cecum, colon. And that is the rectum. Large intestine do not participate in digestion. Its sole function is absorption of salt and extra water and removal of the waste. So that is the human digestive system. Clear? And if clear, please take this screenshot. Okay. Now we'll start from the one by one. Put the heading mouth. Right. Put the heading mouth. Right. So next heading is mouth. and dental formula. Mouth and dental formula. Look, uh, so mouth first, if we talk about the mouth, so we have a tongue and tongue have a different, different uh, uh, like area for tasting the certain taste or the feel the certain taste, right? This is also important part. Tongue have area which realize or which we feel the different taste. So look. Uh, look. So this is the tongue. Again, the tongue have been divided into four parts. So four major tests, right? So previously, scientists used to think that, look, this, this part, this part is responsible for feeling the bitter taste. The side part is responsible for the uh, sore taste. This extreme tapering part, this is responsible for the salty taste. And uh, this part, this this part is responsible for the sweet taste, right? So these are the area. These are, our uh, tongue have a small uh, bud-like structure. They are called taste bud, taste bud. So scientists used to say that this uh, uh, hide uh, part is responsible for bitter taste. This uh, extreme uh, uh, end that is responsible for salty, the sweeter, and this is sour part. But nowadays, scientists nowadays scientists says that every taste bud is responsible, or every taste bud is capable of receiving every kind of the taste. Please note it down. Human tongue have human tongue have human tongue have four taste areas. Four taste areas. Sweet, salt, sweet, salt, sour, and bitter. Sweet, salt, sour, and bitter. Put a stop. Areas of, areas of sweet, 
areas of sweet and salt can overlap. <coughs> Full stop. But according to according to modern scientists, as such, according to modern scientists, as such, there is no such division. According to modern scientists, as such, there is no such division. Full stop. Every part, every part is capable of, every part is capable of receiving, every part is capable of receiving all kind of taste. Right, so this was something about the human tongue. And now put the heading, human denture. Human denture. So the next thing is, that is human. So, look, so first I want to tell you how many type of the teeth we have. This is the human denture. So, humans have four type of the teeth, right, in general. And now we are talking about the adult human being, right, adult human being, that means that's above a teeth. Right. So when we talk about the adult human being, so human have four type of the teeth. So first type is called incisor, second type is called canine, third type is called premolar, and fourth type is called molar. Right. So look, there is two incisor, one canine, two premolar, and three molar. So there are in half of the jaw, there are eight teeth, right? So the copy of, again, eight teeth is found over here. So eight here, eight here, eight here, eight here. So we have eight teeth and there are four set of eight. So eight into four is equal to 32. That's why we call that humans have the 32 teeth, right? But there are four type of the teeth, right? Again. So uh, whenever we talk about the denture formula, what is the denture formula? Before going into the denture formula, I want to tell you what is the uh, peculiarity and what is the actually uh, function of these teeth, why they have been developed in our body. So here the incisor is responsible for biting, right? So it is developed in those animals which have a biting capability. Biting capability means grazing animals. In goats, they are very developed, too much developed. That's why they are able to graze very fast. And that's why that's how they cut the, uh, this one, uh, these uh, grasses and all that, right? So humans and camel, they have very well developed. This, 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 this front teeth, they are called incisor. Again, canine is responsible for tearing. So those animals which are carnivores, they have to tear the uh, uh, flesh. So this is found in those animals. For sake of example, lion, uh, dogs and uh, cats. So this is found in all those animals which are carnivore. Premolar is responsible for chewing, right? So these are developed in those animals which chew properly. Molars are responsible for grinding. Grinding. So they grind the food, right? So this is the function of these teeth. Again, the uh, Adult formula. So now come to the denture formula. What is the denture formula? So denture formula. Let you let me explain you. Denture formula is important for you. So if we talk about the adult, sorry, adult denture
एडल्ट डेंचर फॉर्मूला तो इन एडल्ट डेंचर फॉर्मूला दिस इज दिस इज टू वन टू जीरो दिस इज टू सॉरी टू वन टू थ्री अपॉन टू वन टू थ्री इन टू टू तो दिस इज टोटल थर्टी टू लुक इन अपर जॉब वी हैव टू वन टू थ्री मीन्स टू इन सीजर वन कैनाइन टू प्रीमोलर एंड मोलर राइट इन मोलर राइट अपॉन टू वन टू थ्री राइट तो दिस इज देर आर टोटल थर्टी टू डी राइट so there are completely 32 teeth which are found so that is the denser formula in uh, adult is it clear to you yes sir okay sir please explain it so look there is two incisor so i have put over here two one canine two one two premolar and three molar so two one two three so two one two three here and two one two three here so half part two sets are here and two sets are here i have multiplied it into two clear yes we have four type of the teeth eight teeth in half of the jaw and eight in other half of so eight we have four sets of eight teeth clear yes so this is the denture formula right and again one more important thing now uh, how many teeth are found in a uh, child can you tell me how many Teeth are one. Wow, well, many type of the teeth are found in child. Can you tell me? Come on. The infants. How many type of the teeth are found in infants? Any idea? Look. The denture formula in. denture formula is denture formula in child look so denture denture formula in child denture formula in child this is 2120 upon 2120 Into two, zero means so. Which teeth are uh, uh, absent in uh, humans? Uh, sorry, human child. So total teeth are twenty. Come on, tell me. Molars. Very good. So molars are absent in child. Child do not have molar, right? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, just. A Not more. These are not the more two uh, two one zero two. I want to clear a concept. Actually, uh, there there is a question in your medical examination, and was really very confusing. And the question, I want to clear more. I want to discuss more over here. Please uh, focus on uh, my words, whatever I am dictating. So two one uh, zero two point two one zero two. Again, what happened? I in fact have first uh, these incisor, canine, and then it have molar, right? Then it have molar, right? So it do not have premolar. What will happen in future when a child will grow older? These molar will fall down, right? In place of molar, premolar, premolar will arise. and behind the premolar now the molar will arise so if someone ask you i will dictate it if someone ask you what teeth are absent in child that was the question it has been asked recently in 2017 2019 many times right so premolars <coughs> premolars are the teeth which are absent in child right and again molar are only two in number in child so total it have 20 teeth 20 teeth but what will happen a child will have 20 teeth these 20 teeth will fall down after some time and again a human will get new teeth 
yes that's what happened that's what happened so humans have two set of teeth in life so that's why we call humans are diphyodont diphyodont is it clear or not please tell diphyodont yes yes sir again so humans have two type of the teeth so these 20 teeth are called milk teeth again if question ask you how many milk teeth are found so you have to say 20 these are also called deciduous teeth because they will fell down after certain age deciduous so humans have 20 teeth so humans have two 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 type of the teeth in their life permanent teeth and deciduous teeth hence humans are diphyodont again we also say humans are thicodont why we call thicodont because our teeth remains fit in a socket that we call gums right so teeth are remains fit in socket that's why we call thicodont humans of dad for phyodont because we have two sets of teeth are both of the terms clear to you all of you please tell me come on clear yes yes sir put the formula now i will dictate uh please take the screenshot and please note it down whatever is uh, visible to you in your board Done, okay, fine. So please start noting now. Humans are humans are diphyodont. Humans are diphyodont because humans are diphyodont because they have two sets of teeth. because they have two sets of teeth that is milk or deciduous teeth milk or deciduous teeth and milk or deciduous teeth and permanent teeth next point milk or deciduous teeth deciduous i have it no i don't know what it milk or this one deciduous teeth right next point the third molar that is also important question have been asked many time of human being this one third molar of human being is called wisdom tooth 
is called wisdom tooth scientists are saying that it will disappear in future wisdom tooth crystal the latter is the latter is vestigial in the letter is vestigial in <coughs> humans the retinal is vestigial in humans next point the number of so what's after v e s v e s t i v e s t i g i a l vestigial next point milk or deciduous teeth milk or deciduous teeth are temporary milk or deciduous teeth are temporary and 20 in number 20 in number full stop next point it starts miss milk teeth it starts coming out it starts coming out in 6 month old it start coming out in 6 month old and should be present and should be present by the end of 24 month and should be present by the end of 24 month next point these teeth are 32 these teeth are 32 and usually complete by and usually complete by 18 to 25 year and usually complete by 18 to 25 years put a star mark in in child in child premolars are absent next uh one more important thing which i want to discuss over here that is the human teeth right so uh, even i want to show you the diagram of human teeth right let discuss in next case structure of teeth so the head structure of that is the structure and the structure and anatomy look this is the structure and anatomy of tooth so uh, structurally if we uh, uh, talk about the morphologically so morphologically teeth have uh, three parts so it has been divided into three parts and the first part is called crown and the second part is called neck and third part is called root right so physically if we take the lateral section then we will found the upper cover that is a white color of the cover is called enamel enamel is considered the hardest available animal substance on the earth okay uh, so that question have been asked uh, and in medical again the uh, inner side to the uh, enamel there is a part that is called dentin dentin and inside the dentin there is a cavity that is called pulp cavity pulp cavity have blood vessels right so pulp cavity have blood 
vessels means artery and veins and neurons as well right neurons so this part is sensitive actually the uh, this part is called gums and uh, this is the bone and the socket the, the in the bones like in the gums there is a substance called cement cement the function of cement to make the fix the tooth in the socket of gums and this is called root root have the nerve and blood vessels as well they comes out and join in the main nerve and main blood vessels right so this is the structure of tooth right so please note it down enamel is hardest animal structure enamel is the hardest animal structure or substance hardest animal substance on the earth now i have a question for you tell me what is the hardest hardest biological substance on the earth hardest biological substance on the earth who is going to be come on hardest biological structure on the earth yes please tell me mamuna what is the hardest biological structure on the earth so can you repeat what is the hardest biological structure or substance on the earth or hardest biological substance on the earth um i i think it's uh, the teeth of Snail, uh, snails. Teeth of snails. A uh, teeth or enamel is not a the answer. Now tell me. I'll give you a clue. The substance is found in plants. This is stronger than enamel. Look, the answer will be sporopollenin. The sporopollenin. So if it is confusing, that's why I'm telling you here only. The sporopollenin is found in pollen grain. Pollen grain. So if question asks you, what is the hardest biological structure on the earth, or what is the biochemical structure, then answer will be sporopollenin. If they ask you, what is the hardest plant structure, then answer will be sporopollenin. If they ask you, what is the hardest animal structure, then the answer will be enamel. Clear? Please note it down. clear so this was the dental structure now put the heading anatomy of digestion the heading is anatomy of digestion anatomy of digestion right so in anatomy of digestion we will study one by one the next part is mouth right so please start putting down so the first heading is esophagus so we are going to study the anatomy part so first part is esophagus right Please note it down. Esophagus, esophagus is commonly known as esophagus is commonly known as food pipe. Esophagus, esophagus is commonly known as food pipe it is about it is about 25 cm it is about 25 cm long first off it lies behind it 
lies behind trachea and heart it lies behind trachea and heart Full stop. It is divided into it is divided into three part. Three part. It is divided into three part. Cervical. Thoracic. Cervical. Thoracic. And abdominal. It is divided into three parts cervical, thoracic, and abdominal. Next. So, next structure is stomach. Anatomy of stomach. Now, let's discuss about this stomach. <coughs> Before discussing the stomach, I want to show you a diagram of a stomach. This is this. This is the actually stomach. Again, the stomach have been divided into many parts. Right? Focus on the main part where I uh, where I like uh, mentioned. So this is the esophagus. So the first part is called fundus. This is the fundus part. It remains filled with gas. And the second part is called stomach. Again, cardiac part. And third part, which is the main part, that is the body part. And the fourth part, which is the last part, that is called pylori. It's called pylori. Right. This is the uh, this pylorus. This is the uh, fourth part. Right. So stomach have been divided into four parts. And look. These, uh, this, this is this is called a uh, gastroesophageal junction where esophagus and this it, it meets, right? And uh, again, from here the small intestine start. This is this this part. This is duodenum. From here the small intestine start. So this is the main part of the stomach. So please note it down. The stomach is the stomach is a J-shaped structure. J shaped structure. Full stop. The lesser curvature, the lesser curvature, this part, the lesser curvature is found on is found on posterior surface, posterior surface, and greater curvature and Greater curvature is found at and greater curvature is found at anterior surface. Sir, can you repeat? Yes. Lesser curvature, lesser curvature is found on posterior surface and greater curvature is found at anterior surface next part it can be divided it can be divided into it can be divided into following four part <coughs> the cardiac part the cardiac part lies in the the cardiac part lies near the heart and food pipe opens into and sir can you repeat from liar lies near the near the heart full stop food pipe opens into this part next 
second fundus fundus remains commonly fundus this question have been asked fundus remains commonly filled with gas fundus remains commonly filled with gas next point body is body is the main part of the stomach next point pyloric is pyloric is the posterior part of pyloric is the posterior part of pyloric is the posterior part of the stomach please note it down the function of stomach what is the function of stomach the function of stomach to churn and break up function of stomach to churn and break up the food churn and break up the food <coughs> with gastric juice next partial digestion partial digestion takes place at stomach partial digestion takes place at stomach next so what is the secreted what are the enzymes which are secreted by stomach right so uh, yes please note it down stomach secrete so actually the stomach wall have a certain kind of the gland and those glands are called actually so uh, gastric gland right so they secrete the stomach secrete the stomach secrete pro enzyme the stomach secrete pro enzyme pepsinogen pro enzyme is active enzyme pepsinogen and whenever we i ask pro enzyme means active enzyme so stomach secrete pro enzyme pepsinogen and pro renin pro renin stomach secrete pro enzyme pepsinogen and pro renin let's stop it secrete gastric lipase it secrete gastric lipase and gastric amylase gastric amylase it secrete gastric lipase and gastric amylase the next point please put a star make a star and that is very important point this is the question for your medical examiners come on first i would give to or try to for try for you so try to give me answer let's let me see can you answer this question name the hormone which is secreted by stomach any one of you please tell me. name the hormone which is secreted by stomach can you tell me please note it down stomach also secrete it stomach also secrete gastrin hormone stomach also secrete gastrin hormone full stop gastrin stimulate the secretion of hcl gastrin stimulate the secretion of hcl by parietal cell secretion of hcl by parietal cells by 
I'll repeat it again. Right, it's just. Uh, stomach also secrete gastrin hormone. Let's stop. Gastrin stimulate secretion of HCL by parietal cells of a stomach. The last point, alcohol, last point, alcohol, right? Alcohol, aspirin, alcohol, aspirin, lipase, drugs, lipase, drugs, and moderate amount of sugar, and moderate amount of sugar is absorbed by the stomach. Now tell me, is it clear to all of you or not? Clear? Yes, sir. Tepula, clear? Yes, sir. Sir, what's that after uh, uh, gastric lipase and? Gastric lipase uh, and? Okay, uh, there is gastric amylase. After gastric lipase, this is gastric amylase. Okay, sir. Right. So, next put the heading small intestine. So, next part is small intestine. So, anatomy of small intestine. So, we are going to discuss small intestine. Small. Uh, I'm trying to put any diagram if I am. Small intestine. Give me one second. Yes. So these are the parts of small intestine. <coughs> so, so a small intestine, it has certain parts, and this type mainly three parts: duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Right. So we again divide uh, this small intestine in three parts. And what is the function of these parts? Please note it down. So first put the heading small intestine. A small intestine, a small intestine is a small 
because it have small diameter it is not small in length actually its diameter is small that's why we call it the small intestine a small intestine is called small because its diameter is small full stop it is 6 point it is 6 point 25 meter in length it is 6.25 meter in length full stop it comprises of it comprises of duodenum jejunum and ileum it comprises of duodenum jejunum and ileum full stop next duodenum is duodenum is the uh, duodenum is the shortest part duodenum is the shortest part and it is duodenum is the shortest part and it is 25 centimeter in length duodenum is the shortest part it is and it is 25 centimeter in length full stop hepato pancreatic ampulla hepato pancreatic hepato pancreatic let me write it more clearly hepato Hepato pancreatic ampulla open into duodenum. Open into duodenum. Full stop. Jejunum is jejunum is the middle part of small intestine jejunum is the middle part of small intestine and it is and it is about 2.5 meter long and it is about 2.5 meter long next Ilium has ilium has a diameter of ilium has a diameter of 3.5 centimeter this is the this is the longest part this is the longest part of a small intestine full stop it is 3.5 meter it is 3.5 meter long sir it has diameter it has diameter for oh, 3.5 centimeter it have diameter 3.5 centimeter but this is not the actually uh, most peculiar thing. What they will ask you as a question, look. So in the ileum, there are small, small glands like structure. So ileum have this ileum part have small, small, these gland like structure. Actually, these small glands are responsible for formation of lymphocyte cells, means WBC, right? 
what we call these glands actually these glands are called tears patches or lymph nodules these are called tears patches and tears patches are actually found in small intestine they are lymph nodules lymph nodules so their function is to produce lymph right so note it down in some places in some places particularly to ileum in some places particularly to ileal there are some nodules let's stop these clustered nodules these clustered nodules are called tears patches or lymph nodules these clustered nodules are called tears patches or lymph nodules let's talk tears patches are tears patches are distinguishing characteristic of ileum tears patches tears patches are distinguishing characteristic of ileum <coughs> they produces they produces uh, can you repeat from this equation they are pears patches are distinguishing characteristic of ileum distinguishing characteristic of ileum they produces they produces wbc or they produces wbc or lymphocytes they produces wbc or lymphocytes again if we talk about the anatomy of a small intestine so they have a certain finger like projection right so they have certain finger like projection these finger like projections are called villi actually they are basically responsible for the they are basically responsible for the uh, absorption of the substances right so absorption of the food material so we call those uh, finger like projections as villi mm -hmm. look there are certain finger like projections Hi. Let me show you the diagram of this. Let me make it a bit smaller diagram. Right. 
look so this this these are the finger like projections look so a small intestine have finger like projections so what we call these finger like projections these are called villi right so these folding these folding structure they are called microvilli or brush border structure they are actually responsible for absorption of the substances so this upper process is called absorptive cell actually they absorb the uh, material so these are called villi look these are villi these folding structure or these structure they are called villi uh, the villi in, inside the villi there are certain intestinal crypt means intestinal glands and they have certain capillaries so they are blood capillary they absorb the substance and mix into the blood they have some artery they have some veins and there are some cells these are called lacteal cells lacteal cells are or lacteal vessels they are called actually lymph vessels so lymph vessels actually absorb fat substance and rest of the substances are absorbed by villi is it clear so now start noting down please note it down uh in some places lymph node we have this yes we have noted down lymph node yes yes we have noted down it lymph node yes okay so function of a small intestine function of a small intestine is <coughs> complete digestion function of a small intestine is to complete digestion of protein complete digestion of protein carbohydrate fat protein carbohydrate fat and nucleic acid full stop it absorb nutrient into it absorb nutrient into blood and it absorb nutrient into what after digestion of protein carbohydrate and nucleic acid nucleic acid mean dna and rna and nucleic acid full stop it absorb nutrient into blood and lymph it absorb nutrient into blood and lymph next point the small intestine also secrete certain hormone the small intestine also secrete certain hormone such as such as secretin and and colecytokinin such as secretin and colecytokinin secretin is responsible for regulating secreting secretin is responsible for regulating pancreas and pancreas and liver secretion and liver secretion plus to colecytokinin is responsible for regulating regulating gall bladder gall bladder and pancreas gall bladder and pancreas clear small intestine clear 
Yes, sir. Okay. Now put the headings. Next heading that is a large intestine. So we are now we are studying only only the that part that is called anatomy. Then we will study the glands. Now, now the next part is large intestine. Uh, sir, Let's, secretary yes. is responsible for regulating. Regulating the uh, gallbladder and pancreas. Uh, no, sir. Sec secretin. Secretin. Yes. Sorry. A uh, colius I think is responsible for uh, uh, this regulating this pancreas, the gallbladder and pancreas. Secretin is responsible for regulating pancreas and liver. Pancreas yes, and liver. Yes. So next heading is large intestine. Yes. Uh, let me show the diagram. The function of large intestine is very simple. It's not that much difficult. So it's very simple. So this is the structure of large intestine. And again, large intestine, uh, this part is called appendix. So as we have discussed in starting that appendix is a vestigial organ, vestigial organ. Along with one more thing, that this is the uh, colon part, right? Colon. So this is the ascending colon. This is transverse colon. This is descending colon. This is called sigmoid colon, right? And this is called rectum part, right? Please note it down. Large intestine is about one point five meter, one point five meter long. Large intestine is about 1.5 meter long and divisible into three part. Divisible into three part. Cecum, colon, and rectum. Cecum, colon, and rectum. Next point. Cecum and cecum and vermiform appendix. Cecum and vermiform. It is so. What cecum do? Cecum have some good bacteria, right? So we have symbiotic relationship those, with those bacteria. These bacteria actually synthesize some vitamins. So it is responsible for vitamin synthesis, right? So good bacteria lives in this part, cecum part, and they synthesize mm -hmm. some vitamin, and they also help in absorption of vitamin, right? And as we know, working of appendix, this is the vestigial part we have already discussed. So please note it down. It is. Pouch like structure. It is pouch like structure, which is it is pouch like structure, which is about six centimeter in length. It is pouch like structure, which is about Six centimeter in length. Full stop. Though it is a vestigial organ, though it is a vestigial organ, look. So, what happens? So, uh, here and uh, suppose that sometime what happens? The vermiform appendix, it got some infection. And if it got some infection, this part, inflammation of this part takes place. And it produces or it generates a disease. That disease is called appendicitis. So it is responsible for appendicitis disease. 
on that time what happens doctor cut this part and remove this part from the body because it is of useless it is of no use right so put though it is vestigial organ comma inflation in it inflation in it causes appendicitis disease inflation in it causes appendicitis disease full stop it is well developed it is well developed in herbivores it is well developed in herbivores next colon colon is divided into four region colon is divided into four region ascending ascending transverse descending ascending transverse descending ascending transverse descending ascending transverse descending and sigmoid full stop next rectum is last 20 cm long rectum is last 20 cm long digestive gland full stop its function is absorption of water its function is absorption of water and elimination of absorption of water and elimination of solid waste elimination of solid waste to stop moderate quantity of vitamin k moderate quantity of vitamin k vitamin b complex manufactured by bacteria in large intestine so please repeat uh function is absorption of water and elimination of solid waste please stop moderate quantity of moderate quantity of vitamin k moderate quantity of vitamin k and vitamin b complex vitamin k and vitamin b complex manufactured 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 by bacteria <coughs> manufactured by bacteria in large intestine okay for the next part that is the digestive gland now we are going to discuss uh, with the sir, digestive gland individually yes can you please explain the last point last point is that uh, vitamin b complex and uh, vitamin k this i have uh, a few minutes before i told you 
that this part, the cecum part, it synthesizes some vitamin, right? It has certain bacteria. So these bacteria are good bacteria. So actually this cecum part, the cecum part, it contains a certain kind of uh, bacteria. They are called E. coli bacteria. E. coli is a symbiotic bacteria with human, right? What symbiotic bacteria do? It take the waste from nutrition as a nutrition uh, for its body. Bacteria takes the nutrition from human body and in return, they give us vitamins. So these bacteria manufacture or synthesize vitamin in our cecum part. So what small and large intestine is responsible for, large intestine is also responsible for senses of vitamin K and vitamin B complex with the help of bacteria. Clear? Yes. Okay. Next heading is digestive glands. Any doubt? Till this part? No. Sir. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the next part is that is digestive gland. So first digestive gland is that is salivary gland. So put the heading. Library gland. So, how many salivary glands are found in human? Can you tell me? I have a question. How many salivary glands are found in human? Three. Power four, five, six. Three. Six. Right, six. So I have told you three types of the salivary glands are found. And there are three pair of salivary glands actually in our body. So there are total six salivary glands. So this larger one is called parotid. Right? Mm -hmm. This is called sublingual. Sublingual. And this is called submandibular. So there are three types. Par parotid are the largest type, right? So please start noting down. The slivery glands are of three pairs. The slivery glands are of three pairs. That is parotid, sublingual, parotid, sublingual, and submandibular. That is parotid, sublingual, and submandibular. Plus top. Parotid are parotid are the largest slivery gland, which are parotid are the largest slivery gland, which are situated near ears. Full stop. It secrete. It secrete much of. It secrete. This is the place be from which is. Parotid are the largest salivary gland, which are situated, which are situated near to ear. Full stop. It secrete. It secrete salivary amylase. Salivary amylase. It secrete salivary amylase 
और और अल्फा एमाइलेज दिस स्लाइवरी एमाइलेज और अल्फा एमाइलेज बोथ आर आल्सो नोन एज टाइलिन टाइलिन राइट सो करेक्टिवली बोथ आर कॉल्ड टाइलिन नेक्स्ट सब मैंडिबुलर एंड सब लिंगुअल सिक्रीट सब मैंडिबुलर एंड सब लिंगुअल सिक्रीट स्लाइवरी एमाइलेस स्लाइवरी एमाइलेस एंड म्यूकस सिक्रीट स्लाइवरी एमाइलेस स्लाइवरी एमाइलेस एंड म्यूकस सलाइवरी एमाइलेज एंड म्यूकस फुलस्टॉप नेक्स्ट पॉइंट शुड बी इन स्टार फॉर्म मेक अ स्टार दिस इज क्वेश्चन दिस हैव इनफैक्ट इट हैज बीन ऑलरेडी आस इन मेडिकल एग्जामिनेशन सो सलाइवरी एमाइलेज सलाइवरी एमाइलेज सलाइवरी एमाइलेज इज एबसेंट इन इज एबसेंट इन हरबी वोर एबसेंट इन हरबी वोर सलाइवरी एमाइलेज इज एबसेंट इन हरबी वोर next the disease mump is the disease mumps is again the disease mumps is viral infection in <coughs> one or viral infection in one or both of the वन और बूथ ऑफ दी पैरोटिड ग्लैंड नेक्स्ट सलाइवा है पी एच सलाइवा है पी एच सिक्स पॉइंट एट फुल स्टॉप वन थाउजेंड to 1500 ml of saliva 1000 to 16 1500 ml of saliva is secreted every day next salivary gland also have lysozyme which is antibacterial which is antibacterial agent so we have lysozyme which is found in our tear which is also found in our sweat which is also found in our salivary glands saliva so this is antibacterial enzyme means that kills the bacteria so salivary glands clear all of you yes sir great now put the next heading that is gastric gland means they are found in our stomach so the next heading is gastric gland gastric glands
look this is the diagram of gastric glands so gastric glands are found inside our stomach right so in the, they are found basically in the wall of stomach right so for example suppose that i want to tell you where exactly they are found suppose that uh, this is our stomach so for example uh this is our stomach uh stomach in the wall of stomach right so these are the wall of in the wall of stomach there are certain glands these are called as the gastric glands right these gastric glands they pour out the pore of their enzyme right and these enzyme actually work for the digestion so this is the actually diagram of gastric gland right so gastric gland have certain mucus cells they have mucus cells they have uh, certain parietal cells they have chief cells they have endocrine cells look mucus cells are responsible for secretion of mucus mucus right again neck mucus cells they are also responsible for mucus. parietal cells they are parietal cells are actually responsible for secretion of hcl parietal cells are also known as oxyantic cell they are also known as oxyantic sorry o x y oxyantic oxyantic cells right parietal cells or they are also known as oxyantic cells again there are chief cells they are secretion of pepsinogen they secrete pepsinogen hormone uh, enzyme and this is lipase there are some intro uh, endocrine uh, cells are they are also called g cells they are responsible for secretion of gastrin the function of gastrin we have already discussed right to so start noting down and in fact chief cells are responsible for sex, uh, excretion of sorry secretion of pepsinogen lipase and uh, amylase amylase and proradin proradin means inactive right right please note it down the chief cells are the chief cells are peptic cells they secrete they secrete gastric amylase comma gastric lipase full stop So please repeat from gastric amylase. Gastric amylase, comma, gastric lipase. Full stop. It secrete proradin. It secrete means chief cells. It secrete proradin in young mammals. it is not secreted what proradin it is not secreted in adult next oxyantic or parietal cell oxyantic so it is not secreted in adults next oxyantic or parietal cells is responsible for secretion of hcl oxyantic or parietal cell is responsible for secretion of hcl next mucus cell is responsible for secretion of mucus
नेक्स्ट गैस्ट्रिक जूस विथ पीएच वैल्यू वन पॉइंट फाइव टू टू पॉइंट फाइव इन एडल्ट गैस्ट्रिक जूस विथ पीएच वैल्यू वन पॉइंट फाइव टू टू पॉइंट फाइव इन एडल्ट एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लीज अंडरलाइन द लाइन एंड इन इनफैंड एंड इन इनफैंड द पीएच वैल्यू and in in fact the ph value is 5.0 so in adult the ph value of gastric juice is 1.5 to 2.5 right 1.5 to 2.5 ph but in 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 fact this is 5.0 only next point about 2000 to 3000 ml about 2000 to 3000 ml of gastric juice is secreted of gastric juice is secreted per day next point gastric juice have gastric juice have two proenzyme pepsinogen and proradin full stop it have three enzyme gastric lipase amylase so it has three enzyme. enzyme gastric lipase comma gastric amylase and hcl so this was about the gastric gland right oh, sir what are the gastric amylase and and hcl right next so uh, the next is that is the liver so put the heading i'll explain the liver then i'll dictate in next class but i'll make you understand today only so the next heading is liver in fact we will discuss both liver and pancreas simultaneously liver and pancreas Look. This is uh, the left lobe. This is the uh, this is the right lobe. This is the left lobe, and uh, so uh, from both of the lobe, there are uh, right and left hepatic duct. So the function of liver is to secrete bile juice, bile juice, and bile juice contain some bile salt as well. so bile salt remains dissolved right the color of the bile juice is yellow 
greenish color because of the some component they are called bilirubin so along with the bile juice there are some component called bilirubin and biliverdin and biliverdin both are found here which gives uh, it color right bilirubin and biliverdin so both are secreted and this right and left hepatic duct right these both uh, have uh, uh, these these both comes and rejoin they form a common hepatic duct right this common hepatic duct it have a certain like uh, uh, this it have hepatic juices so hepatic juices do not go directly into small intestine they get stored over here where gallbladder so bile juice is, is stored in or hepatic juice get stored in here gallbladder right gallbladder store and then end release with the help of bile duct this bile juice goes into the where small intestine and that is called duodenum part right so that's how the secretion of the bile juice takes place right the gallbladder do not have any specific function right the gallbladder do not secrete any kind of the enzyme or hormone what exactly it do it take the enzyme of uh, liver and then it secrete it right so it just function is storage of the bile juice gallbladder is basically a, a, a gland which was active in our ancestors so according to the scientists uh, when the invention of the fire was not there so what happened a uh, normal prehistoric human being they used to eat raw flesh so this gallbladder was a gland which we which used to uh, digest the raw flesh but after the invention of the fire human stopped the uh, eating uh, raw flesh they start cooking the food hence the relevance got uh, uh, like it was of no use then and now it is uh, like in uh, reduced form so gallbladder is just like a vestigial organ it's not in fact vestigial organ but it's just like vestigial organ right so food heading the liver liver is the largest gland of body liver is the liver liver is the largest gland of body full stop present at upper right side of present at upper right side of abdominal cavity full stop it is heavier in male than female it is heavier in male than female full stop in males in males it is 1.4 kg to 1.8 kg and in female it is 1.2 kg to 1.5 kg next point mammalian liver have kafir cells mammalian liver have kafir cells they are phagocytic cell they are phagocytic cells and they eat worn out they eat worn out wbc and rbc next point Uh, so can you please repeat from they are phagocytic uh 
uh, they that that are phagocytic and they eat worn out they eat worn out wbc and rbc liver have fat storage cells and fat storage cells and hepatic cells fat storage cells and hepatic cells full stop bile is bile is secreted by bile is secreted by hepatocyte bile is secreted by hepatocytes cell now put the heading gall bladder and we will start with the gall bladder next class right and function of liver and all that you have to remind me in the next class that we have to start from here so is it clear to all of you or if you any question please ask me any doubt no sir Out. so see you guys in next class that is in wednesday the same time and then we'll go uh, we'll start from the golden beyond from the golden bed onward right okay so bye bye good night take care thank you sir thank you sir welcome welcome thank down. you sir welcome welcome down. Hello, sir. Yes, 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 ma'am. Sir, I have, uh, I have a doubt from uh, the last chapter, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, what is meant by uh, plant growth is intermediate? What is that meant by? Plant growth is intermediate. Uh, tell me the complete substance. Uh, uh, let's say it is plant growth. A uh, plant growth is intermediate. Yeah. And. where is this line actually this is incomplete line it's a heading sir uh, just one minute it's in the textbook textbook in uh, uh, ncert yeah sir okay just wait let me open it uh, page number can you tell me the page number Two forty, sir. Two forty. So, if plant growth generally is intermediate. Okay, you know what they are. They are saying they are saying plant always remains in intermediate growth. Means their youth phase because they keep on going till their death. Right? If the plant is going to die. still it will have a green part in it it stop right so it never becomes aged right so whenever we study about the plant its growth is intermediate we, okay, we can never say yes now the plant growth is stopped so they have stopped this is the final growth of the plant so they keep on growing they keep on growing so that is that's why they are they saying it is intermediate growth right yes sir sir so one more thing sir Uh, yeah sure. what is meant by dorsi ventral leaf dorsi ventral leaf look so uh, th this upper this is skin of the hand is different and this part is different so this is this upper part is called dorsal and lower part is called ventral so you can say this hand is dorsi ventral means by seeing you can say this is the dorsal part this is the ventral part yes so okay. if there is anything where both of the both of the surfaces have different texture different structure then you can say this is the dorsi ventral but you know this is a diary this diary have both like it, at the both of end it have same type of the pages right same same type of the cover so this is not dorsi ventral you can't say that uh, from the cover you can't say this is the upper part this is the lower part so if you can't discriminate that this is the upper part and lower part then that we call isobilateral okay sir okay. yes okay sir thank you sir welcome welcome bye good night bye bye sir